<laughs> he was just cute. He was already in the hallway. All, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we're live now. All right, we start a little early so that we can make sure that our internet connection is uh, set up. So, I'd like to welcome all of you early birds that are out there. Get going here. Uh, check with some of my uh, tech support out there. Uh, Jolene, how are we looking? Am I on the right uh, page this time? I think the last time I went on uh, Facebook Live, uh, I think I went on my page instead of uh, Native <laughs> Wellness. So, yeah, we're going to. Uh, Get started here. All right, Katie Wilbur. Hey, Katie. Our first uh, comment, Katie Wilbur. All right. So I don't want to really get started until um, noon Pacific time, right on the bat. Just want to make sure that we get all of our kinks and stuff the, situated here. Make sure I got enough lighting. Last time I didn't have enough lighting. Looked like I was uh, in a tunnel. In my closet. <laughs> in my closet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you come join me over here, babe? This is uh, my companion, my wife. <laughs> she's going to join in. She might have to head out. That's why she's trying to be shy over here. So she might have to. Oops. There we go. There we go. All right. Make me look two times better. All right. Very good. We still have a couple minutes before we actually get started here. Make sure got all our stuff. All right, Jillian, how's it? How's our connection there? Uh, am I glitching out? Am I looking like Max Hedrum? Uh, native, native wells. Um, yeah. So it looks like we're doing pretty good. We got a good uh, video connection, good audio connection. Uh, maybe I should start out with a song. Hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, about yesterday when I was singing? I have a little baby boy. He's uh, 20 months. Yeah. Pierce is 20 months. And we, I, got, I made him a drum, and we were hitting that drum yesterday. Then I started singing a song, and he got really sad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sad lips, sad eyes. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, Daddy, no more Southern songs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. It's about that time. Nope, we got two, one minute and a half left. Oh, all right. All right, Julian said we're good. We're looking good. All right. Oh, awesome. We're going to have a good power hour today. We're really looking forward to this. Um, my wife and I have been um, nervously anticipating this Friday since we found out that we have that um, we're doing our native wellness uh, power hour so uh, welcome all of you to our native wellness power hour and uh, for those of you that are uh, joining in right now live appreciate it uh, setting your time aside to uh, join native native wellness um, and Jaleen our uh, director our executive director her and our team put all this together be going for five weeks tomorrow we'll start our six week a power hour there will be a schedule coming out um, for next week and also tonight don't forget to uh, tune in tonight um, eight o'clock I believe um, will be the uh, late night uh, talk show uh, hosted by um, Native Wellness and guests and they have all kinds of stuff going on with uh, entertainment and all that. Uh, also, we'd like to thank um, the uh, Noise, Noisy Foundation for helping out and uh, keeping our native, helping to keep our native uh, power hour going. Uh, a couple of things ahead of time here, just to share for those of you that really don't know about Native Wellness. Uh, native Wellness is celebrating 20 years of doing uh, service for the people. We are a, a a social for-profit but a non-profit uh, uh, organization. We say social profit because what we do um, enhances our communities, our native communities, uh, uh, reservation, non-reservation. Uh, we strive to, uh, as Native Wellness, to teach some of the values and principles 
that our ancestors had that we can still hold on to today and live a life of wellness. And for today's Power Hour, I'm going to be focusing on uh, healthy relationships, uh, mainly focusing on men's health, but we also just want to, because I'm the main facilitator, but I wanted to bring my companion in uh, and uh, have her um, share her, her uh, perspective also um, in our relationship. We've been married for eight years now, mm -hmm. um, and um, we have a, we have one little son. Um, uh, one of our older our older children are here watching watching him right now. He's kind of our surprise baby. He's uh, 20, 20 months old, and um, uh, before him, our youngest is seventeen. Yeah, seventeen <laughs> seventeen years apart. So a little thunder. His name is Pierce. Keeps us busy. So he's really attached to his mom. So if he starts winding around and all that, uh, mommy might have to go feed him. So just keep that in mind um, during this time. But I wanted to um, start out with a story. And uh, with this story, um, kind of it shares uh, ways that we need to feed the children within us and not forget that um, our spirit is a beautiful and uh, we need to continue to feed that spirit. So with this story, it is a dream. And within this dream, um, this young man, he was walking through the city. And if you ever seen this city um, was uh, similar to a movie called Black Hawk Down. Uh, you watched that, remember? We watched yeah. that Mogadishu, how all those buildings were all, it was post-war. Buildings were tore down, cars were upside down. It was a dark, overcast, cloudy day. And um, this young man in this dream was walking through this city. And there was one building that was still standing. It was a tall skyscraper. And he figured if he got up on top of that, he could look around and maybe there would be people that were still alive and that he could go find. So he did, he went in that building and he climbed up to the top floor, not the roof, but the top floor and uh, started walking down that hallway. He got about halfway down that hallway and uh, looked into one of these offices and there were these young boys, these young native boys, about six of them. They were sitting in a circle on the floor and right in the middle of their circle they had an old suitcase it was a hard black plastic one right in the middle of their circle and they were ages about five to about 16 17 years old these uh, boys and as this young man looked and saw those two youngest ones were about five six years old they jumped up and they ran over there and they grabbed onto that 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 young man and said Come on, come with us. We've been waiting for you. And he felt really good. He felt like, oh man, these guys are uh, waiting for me. They had a really sense of belonging, like that, you know, and felt like he was part of these boys because they invited him to sit down. But still, he was wondering, curious, why are these boys in this abandoned building, in this circle? And he started thinking, maybe this is something beyond me. His spiritual start start the spiritual spirit started thinking or started talking to him maybe this is something spiritual because it's out of the ordinary and just when he started thinking that about that that oldest one grabbed that suitcase and he pulled it over towards him and he opened it and he was trying to uh, pull something out of it and that young man was watching him and when he got what he was looking for out of that suitcase, he closed it up and slid it back to the middle. But that young man couldn't see what it was because those little boys, they, they were playing all around him because they were so happy to see him. And that the oldest one, he was about 16 or 17, he stood up, he got up and he started walking out. And those little boys stopped and they said, let's go. Let's go and um, follow him, see where he goes. So we all got up and that young man, he walked to the end of that hallway, opened that fire escape door that was at the end of that hallway. And it was one of them old school ones 
where the um, metal floor and it had those zigzag uh, stairs going down. Well, that was all busted off, and so was the railing on that on that metal floor. And um, they were just standing there, about a hundred stories high, on that metal grate, like a little stage on the side of that building, looking out at that city. And that's when that young man got scared because he was about 20 years old and these young boys were gonna start looking to him as their leader. And he wasn't sure if he could do that. So as soon as he started thinking about that, he heard one of them young boys, he said, step up. And so that, uh, that, that young man thought, oh, they're testing me to see how close I'll get to this edge, testing my courage. So that young man stepped up about a foot away from that edge. He wanted to show these boys that he had courage, that he was brave. So he stepped up to the edge of that grate, about 100 stories tall, looking over that whole city that was bombed up post-war. And he stood there. And again, that little boy, he said, step up. And so that man put his toes right up to the edge. He didn't want them boys to think and know that he was scared. So he put his toes right up to the edge. And again, that little boy, he said, step up. So that young man just went a little bit more and put his toes right over the edge. And he's standing there looking out that city and he's getting really scared, but he didn't want them boys to know. And then that little boy, he said, jump. Then he stepped back and started and smiled and laughed because he figured them boys were just kind of teasing him. You know how natives are, we tease each other like that. He turned around and looked at them little boys and they, they weren't teasing. As a matter of fact, they kind of had tears in their eyes and they're looking at him wondering if he's really gonna do it. And that young man, that's when the fear really hit him. And that oldest one walked over to him. And he gave him what was in that suitcase. What he took out of that suitcase, it was a little bird, like a hawk. And it had stripes on its tails. And that, little, and that young man, 16 years old, the oldest of them ones, he handed it to him. He looked up at him and with almost tears coming out of his eyes, he told him, he said, if you take this, and you hold it really close to your forehead. If you hold it really close, and you close your eyes, and you hold this bird really close and tight, and he kept reiterating that, say, hold it close, and you jump, he will help you. But you have to hold it close and tight. So that young man, he accepted that little gift of that bird, and he stood at the edge, looking over that city, and he held on to that. He could not say no to these boys, no matter how much fear he felt because of the way they looked at him. So he held on to that bird and he stood at the edge. He took a deep breath and he held it tight and he jumped. And as soon as his feet left that metal grate, that wind came and slapped him in his stomach and his arms flew out and he became that hawk. He looked back at them boys and they're all jump, wow, yeah, they're all jumping up and screaming like they're happy. You know, like someone hits the last second shot in a basketball game and they win it, they were like that. And that man, that young man was flying around. He said, it felt so good. It was just effortless flight. It was fast, it was swift. He went all over that city, flying everywhere, in and out of tree, up and all over. And, he, and then he heard them boys, come back, come back. So he flew around, he saw them boys way up on that skyscraper and he flew over to them. And as he was flying to them, he thought, ah, oh, man, this is amazing. And he knew them little boys were calling to come back so they could pull him back in. And he went over there, they reached up, and that, that young man said it felt too good. So he pulled away and he went around one more time, all around that city. And then he came back and saw them boys waving at him and he came back. 
And they reached up and they grabbed him and they pulled him back in. And then he was himself again. And they went back into that room and those two little boys, they got that suitcase and they opened it up and they had a bunch of things in there. And they pulled out an abacus. And this abacus with those wooden beads, 10 lines of those wooden beads, all different colors. They took that abacus and they put it on the ground and they stomped on it. They busted that abacus all up. And then they took those little colored wooden beads, gathered them up, and they had wire. They took this metal wire and they put those beads all on that wire and they brought it together. And they took that necklace and they put it over my neck and they gave it to me. So that story is a dream that I had when I was about 20 years old. And it was uh, an awakening for me as a man. It was an awakening because all them boys in, the, in that dream, they were me. Those were what I call my inner child, them little boys. And they're living in that city, that inner child, just because of the way that I grew up. And I share with you, babe, you know that, about some of the hardships that I went through grow, growing up. I mean, we've all been through them. But if we don't get on a road of wellness and recovery, then them little children, that spirit can be trapped. And so Creator blessed me with that vision for myself, for my own personal growth to step up, to overcome that fear, to find and grab onto something that you can truly believe in. And for me, it's our native culture. It's our, it's our peyote way. It's our sweat way. It's our, the songs that we share that helps me. And that's my affirmation, and I want to share that, that affirmation with other men also. It's okay to have those affirmations. And uh, I wanted to invite my companion to this power hour so that we could um, go over some of the things that uh, help us in, in our relationship and also go over this curriculum of healthy relationships so that our shells we can find and uh, also encourage others and maybe inspire others, other men, women, whoever, if you're, if you're striving for a healthy relationship to find something that you can truly believe in, step up, overcome that fear, and take that jump. Take that, that leap of faith, and you can overcome what that city represents. It represents hardships, pain, dysfunction, the hurt, the historic trauma, that if we overcome that fear and have something that we can truly believe in, we can fly above that. We can free ourselves from it. And that's what I truly believe that this uh, healthy relationships curriculum that Native Wellness has uh, kind of lays out strategically uh, through each chapter on how to go about achieving a more um, well and uh, healthy relationships, not only with your companion, but with your work partners, uh, with your children, uh, other family members, friends, uh, things like that. And also, uh, also keeping, in, keeping in mind that there is no perfect relationship. You know, there's, uh, and with this uh, curriculum, it's, uh, if you want to bring it to your community, uh, um, get a hold of Native Wellness, and it's an amazing curriculum because it can be suited to, to and tailored to your clientele. Um, if you're working in an um, inpatient treatment program, if you're working outpatient treatment, uh, if you're working with adolescents in a school setting, uh, it can be adapted. If you're working with adults, uh, whatever, it can be adapted. Uh, so we, we kind of wanted to go over uh, the topics that are discussed in uh, this Healthy Relationships curriculum and invite my wife in so that we can kind of get some dialogue going on, on this and uh, hopefully we can ourselves gain a better understanding of what a healthy relationship is for us because during this COVID time, during our quarantine time, um, gives uh, people a, a lot of opportunity to sit and visit 
find out who they are, what they are. Sometimes we get lost in the everyday thing that, that has been going on before we were quarantined home. Uh, sometimes relationships will suffer. Uh, sometimes relationships will be enhanced. Um, so we're going to bring you some tools to, um, to help you. Uh, deal with some of the things in your relationships and maybe you'll have an aha moment like oh yeah that'll help uh, so that that that's our plan and that was our prayer before we got started we lit some sweet grass and so uh, kind of calmed our spirits a little bit we we're getting kind of um, I don't know if you would say stressed out but um, I guess nervous nervous this is our first power hour so um, what do you say, babe? So just dive right into it, yeah, huh? Yeah, go for it. All right. Let's do um, the, the introduction. First of all, uh, Healthy Relationships was brought together by uh, three main organizations. It was a grant through ANA, which is uh, Administration of Native Americans, and then NICWA, which is a National Association, um, National Indian Child Welfare Association. Indian Child Welfare Association. Um, and Native Wellness back in the early 2000s, um, in the beginning of um, Native Wellness, uh, um, the founding father or mother, Jillian and uh, Theta and ANA brought it all together and started spreading this, uh, uh, leading the uh, next generations in healthy relationships. And uh, one of the main things and in, in what I talked about and on the introduction of um, this healthy relationship is talking about historic trauma and historic drama and how it affects us today. And that, that's actually um, one of the main things we start out with because we need to recognize that there is historic trauma that affects our behaviors, uh, grief, shame, uh, those type of things that are passed down through generation to generation. And if we don't educate ourselves on them, and recognize how they're affecting us and our behaviors we're going to continue it and we want to change some of those negative behaviors and actions that we've learned from our parents and grandparents that weren't really part of the teachings of our ancestors they come from historic trauma uh, for instance uh, i know um one story of uh uh, one of my uh, uncles, when I was about maybe five or six years old, he uh, gave me a mohawk. And my gra I remember my grandmother telling him, don't do that. Those cops are going to know he's an Indian. And then that was my first time I ever thought, well, wow, it's not right to be an Indian. And that came from my grandmother who... Back in the uh, early reservation times, my grandma was born like 1912, but like like around uh, after she got married, they were living up in Canada and with my mother and her brothers and sisters. The Canadian government was aggressively taking kids and putting them in boarding schools. If you were an Indian, they were coming to get you and taking you away. And they fled and ended up in uh, Great Falls. And because of that, she was always had a fear of hiding and you know i know my grandma was uh meant it in a good way and, and she didn't want to mm -hmm. like put that on me that shame or that 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 worry but it was just something that she had and she was just trying to protect me so some of these behaviors that we've learned come from that historic trauma um and that, that that's one that i that i can share and how it affected me growing up and you can see if, if I didn't meet the people that I've met in my life that encouraged me to be native and to be proud of who I am, then I probably would have still been living fearful, fearful and shameful of being Indian. Somehow it would still be in there. But um, being on this uh, road of wildness and um, uh, learning from other men, other uh, Healthy men, taking examples from healthier men, and also uh, this beautiful prayer way of life that we have um, instilled with me a, a, um, a sense of uh, pride about being Native. And uh, one of the things that when we talk about this historic trauma uh, 
an insight for me was um, focusing more on the historic victories of our ancestors. Uh, some of the stories that they've had that inspire me, uh, those type of things. Uh, stories of um, uh, my great-grandparents, uh, those type of things. And, and focusing more on that, we talk about that timeline and there's like 200 years represented here, but we have thousands of years that we can tap into. Where our ancestors were strong. Um, they lived a way of life that was pure and good. They had values and principles that they lived by. And um, one of those things that we were talking about before, um, learned behaviors and historic trauma, like when, uh, as an example, when reservation, early reservation period came, we, there was a, I call it a psychological warfare because it was at that time when we became reactive where they said wait for this wait for that wait for your rations whereas before our ancestors were more proactive okay. right yeah they had um like they prepared for ceremonies mm -hmm. they prepared like sometimes a year ahead of time right sometimes they were um um they had to um uh seasons to prepare for food those type of things they were proactive they got ready and we can take those values and those principles and we can utilize them today what can we do today to be proactive for us in our relationship um knowing that we're going to be quarantined in a home we made a decision made a couple decisions ahead of time that um Whenever we go out shopping, that there's only going to be one person going at a time, mm -hmm. and it's mainly myself mm -hmm. that goes out. And when I come back, I feel like the warrior coming back from <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from hunting. You know, my long braids and my spear, and uh, my wife out there luluing <laughs> as I carry in the package of toilet paper from Costco's. <laughs> so. Anyway, those um, those type of things, those roles and, and things that uh, affect our behaviors today and as far as being proactive, um, you know, taking care of your, your, your home budget, um, knowing how much food that we have, those type of things. Now, if we weren't into being more proactive like our ancestors, then we'd probably be really scrambling right now and, and, really, strugg and really struggling and um, not to um, say that those people that are really struggling aren't listening to their ancestors. It's just that this is uh, our way of uh, going about it. And uh, we have family members that are out there. They, they struggle too. That's why it is so important to take care of ourselves. Good morning, Sian. He's got up from his nap. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it is so important to take care of ourselves and have ourselves in a position so that we can continue to help others. Yeah, grab them, bring them over. So when we talk about this native wellness and we want to um, tap into yeah. some of these and share some of the values that our ancestors have had as far as um, healthy relationships and being proactive. And when we're proactive, preparing, getting ready for things instead of being reactive, those type of things. Um, anything that you wanted to add about that? Oh, and this is Little Thunder. Pierce, say hi, son. <laughs> Is there anything that you wanted to add um, as far as um, that historic trauma? And uh, I think, this? yeah, you know, what I've seen is just, you know, different, just trying to look at different areas of our life and, and in terms of historic trauma, I think, you know, there was a time when it was a lot more, um, common practice to elevate one another, empower one another. Mm. And whereas now, you know, we live in a different time, you know, that's granted, but it's a lot more individualistic, right. you know, and it's not so much for the collective anymore. And I think, you know, as different tribal nations, we try to find ways to, to get back to our roots and, and do things for for all of us. And that's one thing that this, this COVID-19 has brought out of, 
a lot of tribal nations I've seen is um, them working together. And, and, you know, it's not so much what, what side of the political lines you're on, whether it's tribal or national politics, it's what do our people need? Right, right. And that, that's been encouraging, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just trying to see the silver lining of what's, what's happening at this point. Right. And that's, uh, yeah, that's one of the things that we've decided to do. Not watch so much news and so much TV. You know, we, we want to keep up to date on the, uh, the facts and everything that's going on, but we don't want to be immersed into CNN or Fox or any of those news things to where you're just perpetually worried about everything that's get going consumed. on. Right. Get consumed in it. So pull yourself out of that. And, um, um, just start taking care of yourself and uh, prayer is a big part of it in the morning time is a good time for for prayer to set up your day um, and then also what I wanted to get into is um, talking about um, this uh, gender roles because sometimes as men uh, we get stuck into thinking that well I'm the hunter when it comes to being hunters and gatherers um, idealistic the back in the day there was uh, there was that that hunter and gatherers were the uh, warriors and mainly the warriors they went out and they hunted and then the ladies gathered the berries gathered the wood took care of the children the home fires and all that you know that was back in the day they taught that but there were other roles that um, that men and women got into and to have the um, I think what I would call it is the um, secure being secure in your wellness to be able to flow in a relationship where roles change. I know when my wife and I got back first um, got together when we first married. Uh, she was working full time as an attorney for the tribe, and um, I was doing my consulting work, and I limited my consulting work so that she could continue to work full time and I could help take care of our young daughter, uh, keep the home going, those type of things. And in, our, in those roles, it was kind of reversed in the traditional sense as far as uh, how you do American uh, males go out to work, come home, you know, it, it's not, it wasn't like that. Now, uh, where she hasn't been working full time job for about four years, and now we both have kind of reversed the roles of when we first started, but um, you can you can imagine some of the the um, conflict that would create if we were just stuck in the mindset of I have to work as a man and you have to stay home, and that would be a conflict there. But we were both secure enough in our wellness and uh, uh, knowing that that type of mentality it doesn't. It's not conducive to um, having an effective family and uh, an effective household and a um, healthy relationship. So those roles change. Um, some men think that um, dishes and uh, cooking are for women. And uh, yeah, dishes are for women. <laughs> <It's a joke. laughs> I don't like doing dishes, but I love to cook. Right, babe? Right. And I, you know... I actually don't mind doing the cleaning because um, cooking, it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and I, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when we talk about them roles, then, you know, be open to it. Be open to changing. You know, I don't, uh, I don't like doing dishes, but I'll step up and do them sometimes because I know that she gets tired of them. And during this COVID time, you know, you're with each other and sometimes your, your uh, actions and behaviors, you know, you're going to be repeating them over and over and over and with each other and, and being with someone all the time in an enclosed space. And what was that funny? We heard a, we seen a funny meme. It was something like, um, oh my God, do you have to do that over and over and over? Breathing in and out, in and out, in and out. <laughs> See, every little thing started getting on their nerves. Huh? So that kind of moves us into, I want to talk about um, conflict, our um, healthy um, conflict resolution, because um, it's inevitable, you know, and I was teasing with um, some people saying, yeah, um, we're good. Or I was teasing, me and you were teasing, huh? Mm -hmm. We're going to do our power hour on Friday, babe. I'm going to invite you on to be part of it. Hopefully we're not fighting. 
<laughs> because it's um it's normal, right? It's normal it's to have totally conflict. It's totally normal. I and, mean, and it's it's actually kind of healthy too right, because right. if you're constantly getting along, I mean, maybe you're not really getting along. Right. So I think it's only healthy. Um, yeah. You know, there's it's it's just part of life. And recognizing, because I want to also talk about the um, nonverbal communications. Right. Um, those type of things and and reading those nonverbal communications but then also not being so insecure as men to trying to read minds mm -hmm. to where you think and uh and start reverting because what one thing that i had to really look at in our relationship is how i react to certain ways that her nonverbal communication is to me yeah, um, whether it's um, rolling of the eyes. <laughs> Wait, let me think about all I do. You know? <laughs> Big sigh. Uh, you know those type, and how and how I let it, and how I choose to react to it. You know. Well, and then sometimes it's not even at you too. It's right. just maybe I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm tired or um, whatever. I'm just having things on my mind, and it's not. It's not all about you. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. Sometimes uh, as men, as men, we start thinking it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. And so certain reactions are, oh, she did that because of me, mm -hmm. you know, and I need to say, chill out, dude. You know, because there's other relationships we're still trying to navigate in our lives um, mm -hmm. on top of our marriage and our partner. Right. We have our, our children. Mm -hmm. um, and they all have their own personalities and their own situations. And then we have our parents, our extended family, mm -hmm. and whatever may be going on there. Right. So there's, you know, with anybody, especially us natives, it's never just about a nuclear family unit. Mm -hmm. It's always about encompasses so much more. Right, right. Cause you know, in some families, especially during this COVID time, you have maybe three, four families in one house. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that conflict resolution there, there's going to be conflict. You know, there's going to be conflict. And uh, the best way to go about doing it, what I think, you know, we like sweet grass. We like cedar. That's our way. Um, if you're not into that, then, um, you know, find out what it is that you can do together that levels the playing field as far as all the uh you might be thinking this or she's probably thinking that or you know those type of things to where us men we get our mind rolling and it could just make mountains out of molehills or we do so backwards who will make a molehill out of a mountain <laughs> where we try not to where it is a big deal but we try to minimize it um or you know working with our with our companions um as far as um co-managing a household is so important and that conflict resolution you know there's different techniques there's no cookie cutter way um the best way for us men that i think is to be patient to not be so egotistical as to think that it's all about me all the time um just to kind of try to slow our roll sometimes and not let our minds run with us and work with our companions. Um, and it's okay to be angry. So I, I have, I'm a woodworker, so I'm fortunate. I have a shop that I can go to and get away, just kind of get away and, and forget about everything. Um, but I always want to, and I don't, I don't always, but one of the things that uh, I strive to do, especially during this COVID time, and um, I don't know, is it noticeable that I'm more, I strive to be more patient, that when I do get angry, I don't hold on to it as long. Yeah. And I come back and I just try to visit with you and talk to you and give you a hug and try not to blame you for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. But I think what helps though is that we have a, such a, a good sense of humor with each other. Mm -hmm. Like we'll be at basketball games, volleyball games, powwows and... I had someone comment that we are always laughing, but they don't know that it's we're laughing at each other. Yeah. Because yeah. we like to just razz each other and it kind of, it helps mm -hmm. get the other person out of whatever 
you know, room they lock themselves in or they're trying to lock themselves in. Right, right. So that, that really helps. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing that I, I appreciate uh, with my companion is that she recognizes that too and then she got different cues that she gives me as far as you're holding on to that remote control pretty tight <laughs> and sometimes I do and I don't realize it you know it's like I'm a control freak and I'm pretty soon you know it's like I got the remote control I get up to go get a drink and I still have the remote control or you fall asleep I fall asleep but I still have the remote control <laughs> Like, chill out. You're yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let go. Let go. Let go. Breathe. Yeah. Breathe. <laughs> yeah. So those type, you know, conflict resolution, laughter is a big part of that. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Laughter. And I think a lot of it, like you said, it's kind of recognizing each other's cues because, yeah. you know, it's just a matter of, of, maybe there's sometimes you don't want to be teased or whatever so it's just giving you space and then the same with me mm -hmm. you know yeah. and give me a few minutes and i'm all right yeah yeah and you know that's good awesome plus having a toddler really puts it in perspective too know, that you can't yeah. plan everything out <laughs> no that little guy keeps us on our toes and you know and it's just not um yeah he forces us to to have our, to interact with each other. And not yeah, to... and, and evolve, evolve in terms of whatever, yeah. you know, um, circumstances there are. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to to go with the flow, so to speak. Right, right, right. Good. Yeah. And uh, uh, another, another part of uh, our Native Wellness, uh, one of our chapters uh, that follows that uh, healthy conflict uh, resolution is uh, healthy communication you know it's kind of just what we've been talking about that healthy communication and like I said uh, sometimes as a man I won't talk I'll just chalk it up head to my shop and uh, get lost like <laughs> <laughs> and get lost in my woodwork or, or, or working outside you know and then just try to forget about it and uh, but I'm still holding on to something so just to learn how to let it go, and I, I use woodwork for that too. I use woodwork, mm -hmm. and just and it just kind of calms me down. I come back in, and men, it's okay to apologize. Yes. Holy cow! You know, yes. sometimes I do, and I'm like, I'm not gonna apologize. <laughs> now you need apology for it. Like, you haven't even said sorry. <laughs> I could be over it too, but I'm just like, nope, gotta say sorry. <laughs> So, <laughs> so work with each other. You work with, even though it sounds ridiculous as at, for us as men, you know, we need to let's work work with our wives. Same way with the, you know, my wife and um, to to work and recognize our own behaviors, our own character defects, laugh mm -hmm. at them, encourage them. Ultimately, I feel encouraged and inspired by my companion. And when I get in a negative mindset, I remember. Um, you know the the struggles that she's been through, and uh, the woman that she is now, and what created that woman, and the, the um, things that she has overcome to be where she is now, and uh, the pride that I feel for that. And you know, I just remind myself, and it just kind of calms me down. It's just chill out. This is just one little incident, so get over it. And that's where the healthy communication comes into where we can just sit and visit calmly talk to each other and uh, try to don't do everything over text I know. <laughs> i'm reminding myself <laughs> see <laughs> it doesn't come off that great yeah <laughs> even if in my mind i wrote something very simple like can you do this then it might come off as damn it why didn't you do this and that yeah. right yeah <laughs> clarify things you know through don't just add so emojis no. <laughs> uh, nice emoji. Yeah, the one with the wink. Just don't do this one. No. <laughs> Those two together bring us to our next one. Coming together as a couple. That's our next chapter that we want to discuss here. Coming together as a couple. Um, what were we taught? What were we taught? on how to come together as a couple where we taught to become friends first, where we taught to um, um, 
I don't know, um, some of the stuff that our ancestors, you know, I hear stories of uh, the use that flute. Mm -hmm. You know, a young man would fix up a flute uh, when he knew there was a young lady that uh, he admired and liked, and he would play that flute. And if she liked the sound of it, then uh, she would come over and uh, start talking to him, and that would be, be the beginning of the relationship. And there were protocols that our ancestors had, you know, as far as... Um, um, gifts you would give, um, courting, you know, mm -hmm. they courted for so long. Uh, some tribes even had um, the young man live with the young woman and their family for six months or maybe for a full season, a full year. And then the young lady would go live with his family for a full year before they decided to come together. Then they would know what kind of family each one came from and they could see what expectations that their parents had those type of things. Did you do any of that before you guys got married? Those type of things is what we want to discuss in this uh, how we came together. Shall we share our uh, story of uh, how we met? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good one. It's a good one because um, in Billings, about eight years ago, uh, I went into this um, coffee shop. And uh, there's this young, uh, good-looking, hot, native, educated woman sitting there, reading a book, laptop. I was like, Z -Z <laughs> and So I went up to her and I asked her, I said, do you know how much uh, Eskimo weighs? And she looked at me like, what the hell? Oh, no, Eskimo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, wow, it was a polar bear. Oh, huh? yeah. <laughs> All right. How much does a polar bear weigh? She looked at me like, what the heck? What? And I said, enough to break the ice. My name is Marcus. <laughs> hey, no. Eight years later, uh, <laughs> they snagged her. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, um, uh, we met that way. It was with laughter and we sat there and we laughed for about an hour, didn't we? I mean, that's the thing I remember is just sitting for an hour and just talking about who all we knew and then laughing mm -hmm. a lot of laughing yeah it was good times good times it was fun we still have fun you yeah know, we still we have a lot of definitely fun. We, have, we like to we enjoy laughing a little more sleep deprived but yeah well with that little guy you <laughs> yeah. i sleep well i don't yeah, breastfeed yeah. all yeah. night <laughs> you snore yeah anyway. i snore all night i fall asleep right away and i get up bus <laughs> five, six, and, <laughs> but morning times are my time with baby boy. Yeah. So we worked together with uh, raising our, our little our baby because, uh, you know, he's right with us all the time. You know, we're not one of those mm -hmm. that puts their baby in another room and then uh, have a monitor. Our baby's right here mm -hmm. all the time. And it's just our choice. Yeah. You know, he's our, yeah. he's the youngest, he's the baby. Yeah. So he's right there with us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we love that little guy. So we're fortunate. We continue to grow together. You know, we've been growing together for eight years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've gone through some very difficult times because we're a blended family. You know, I had three sons that I raised. And uh, they're all men now. And I'm proud of all my boys. Uh, I love them and they love me. Um, Melissa has an adult son. Um, and then our daughter was 10 years old when we got together. And then now our... A little baby boy so we're fortunate but uh, when we talk about this healthy relationships and uh, living a healthy lifestyle it's not just about your family members like we're talking about mm -hmm. it's our friends it's um, co-workers the people that you meet those type of things one of one of the attitudes that I try to carry is um, <clears throat> and I think it was um, Will Rogers. If I could quote this white guy, it would be Will Rogers. <laughs> I think it was him, but he said, I'd never met a man I didn't like. And when I read that, I thought, ah, BS. How can you, how can you like everybody? It seemed to me would be like, no. Nah. But then I reread it and thought, no, that's not what it was saying. It was saying, 
I never met a man I didn't like, meaning you give that benefit of the doubt until you meet them. Might not like them afterwards, but at least you give them that benefit, you know. And living your life that way and just kind of looking at people as, well, these are going to be good people, you know, and um, going about it like that. But still having that protection for yourself and your family and being aware and being vigilant, um, at the, especially at this time, being aware and being vigilant as men. It means more than just protecting your family from people that might hurt them. It means protecting them from sickness and illness. It means pr protecting them from not only sickness and illness physically, but spiritually and mentally. Mm -hmm. Protecting them, meaning giving them an example, giving them a role model to look at. So that means you need to protect yourself as a man. Protect your spirit, your mind, your body. And how do you do that? Through exercise, physical exercise, spiritual exercise what's what's our spiritual exercise using that cedar mm -hmm. uh, praying together uh, physical exercise just as far as stretching uh, getting some movement going like Thosh and Chelsea talk about just have movement you know raking the yard cleaning out the, uh, the garage those type of things making I know my wife is up and down those stairs she's doing laundry she's packing our baby but she don't have to pack him all the time but I know sometimes she's just doing exercise she's just packing around using him as exercise those type of things um, this the spirituality is so important that to, to share mm -hmm. and uh, to have your own personal spirituality and bring that in and to share it with somebody else whose spirituality can mesh and share together is a beautiful thing because we both believe in our traditional ways. Um, we both have faith in it, and we've both seen beautiful um, results as far as our prayers and our wishes for our children come to pass. Uh, nobody likes to see their children suffer. And so as parents, sometimes it's difficult to let those things go in that relationship of uh, adult children and parents. And sometimes um, we want to hold on to too much. And sometimes uh, as men, maybe we let that relationship go too early with uh, our children, our, especially our sons. That father-son relationship is so important. That you, uh, It's never too late, though. It's never too late to grasp onto that. You, know, you can have adult sons, and you should still be able to have a good relationship with them. Um, if you have uh, children that you haven't seen in a while, reach out to them. Let them know, you know, because the greatest gift that I think a man can give to their children is just that they know that they have the love of their father and that they can uh, tap into that whenever they want. That being available and being engaged is the biggest gift that we can give to our children. <clears throat> And it doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that uh, we have our all of our crap together either. As long as you're an engaged father as far as working on yourself and uh, striving to, to um, overcome some of those past uh, learned behaviors and to continue to grow, then you're going to get a healthy relationship. You're going to start gaining healthy relationships. It's just one of those things that happens, whether you start working on your physical, spiritual, emotional, or mental. Choose any one of them. Uh, when I talk about this emotional part, I'm talking about maybe there's some unresolved grief, worry, anxiety. You know, if there's someone sick in your family, maybe you have a, a father or a mother or a grandparent that isn't feeling good, and those type of behave, those type of um, Worries and anxieties, they can affect your behavior. <clears throat> Some of uh, you men out there, you might be um, the ones that are the sole provider of your family, and now you're home you're trying to get your unemployment. Money's not coming in. Food is running out. It's okay to ask for help. Put some of that pride aside and let people know and let them know, yeah, we need some food. We need, we, we need to... Um, uh, have a hold put on some of our bills for maybe a month or so, but it's okay to ask for help. That's one of the hardest things as men mm -hmm. is to be able to ask for help.
Yeah. And I think, you know, and that's why I've really been impressed with the community um, <clears throat> outreach of different organizations coming together and helping their community. It's, you know, it's not about, there's no judgment. It's just, hey, we're, we're in this together. Right. And I think that's the message that should be out <clears throat> there is you're not alone. We're in this together. Right. And there's help. Yeah. And so if you're feeling that, if you're feeling alone and like there's nobody out there to help and you're getting anxiety and you're getting yourself into a negative mental spot, stop. Take a deep breath and it's okay to ask for help. It's okay. That's uh, men want to help men. We're out there to um, encourage and inspire. It's not just these rugged individuals out there striving so that they can be the best. You no know, more. There's 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 healthy men out there's there's more healthy men out there than there are unhealthy men, and so we need to put a face on that for our young native men so that they can see that there are healthy native men out there that are willing and wanting to help one another and encourage each other to to be stronger, be stronger in our in our mind and in our hearts, and so that our children and then our, our young men can um, redefine what it means to be a native man. It means to, because the way that I grew up uh, in an unhealthy uh, way of life, um, native men in my life were winos. That's who I was raised by and uh, dysfunctional. And there was a lot of abuse, um, but now that is changing. You look around and there's more and more native men that are coming to these wellness events more and more native men that are involved in uh, mental health and um, getting involved in community events uh, organizing community events basketball games uh, camps those type of things in native communities and it's just going to continue to grow stronger and stronger because we have a uh, a group of young natives um, I-20SP, the Indigenous 20-something project. These are young natives that are going to other native communities and sharing experiential education, doing activities and teaching to those about, and to, with those activities about how to live a healthy lifestyle. Obstacle courses, um, games and tag and different things like that is uh, amazing. And uh, I'm, ex I'm really excited about the future of our native nations because this just kind of shows being in this COVID quarantine time, um, what you talked about, how we started getting stuck into thinking we're individual. Mm -hmm. But now we see that it's going to take the community, all of us together, to help one another and to, to share our wellness and to um, continue this uh, beautiful way of life that we have and continue to build uh, positive and healthy relationships. So. Pretty much that's um, what we wanted to visit about mm -hmm. and um, uh, give you guys uh, an introduction to us. And we have more of these healthy relationships. We kind of want to get into specifically what the chapters are about, but that's kind of the overview of what healthy relationships are. And oh, we forgot to talk about better sex. <laughs> that's one of the chapters. That's one of the chapters. It's uh, chapter seven. And uh, this is kind of embarrassing sometimes, so we won't really get into it, um, but we'll leave that up to you guys. Do your homework. <laughs> when we get into chapter, we'll talk about that more specifically. It's just as far keeping it out of the um, um, dysfunction of it and just having a free flow conversation about our sexuality and with this uh, curriculum, you get into talking about how do we visit with our children about that? What type of uh, healthy sexual attitude are we promoting with our children as they grow up and that type of education? And are we visiting with them and talking to them about when they meet people, it's not about having sex right off the bat. Get to know that person. Have them be a friend. Court them for a while. You know, become good friends, those type of things. Um, and living in balance. You know, those are the main core um, ideas of what um, Native Wellness uh, Healthy Relationships Curriculum is all about. So I would like to say thank you. Hi, hi. Get dummy in. How do you say thank you in Crow? Uh-huh. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to end it there. And do you have any last words you want to say? Some advice? Um, yeah, just for everybody to continue to stay safe and healthy. And, um, and positive as much as you can. Right. You know, especially with some states that are deciding to reopen. Yeah. Um, to continue to stay safe and, and for the sake of not only you, but your families and encourage your, your kids and your families to continue to, to stay safe because it's still, yeah. it still hasn't really hit, um, you know, a lot of Indian communities, not to mention, you know, of course there's Navajo and we all have them in our prayers and in mm -hmm. our thoughts and, and just wishing the best for them because it's, it's a rough time. And, right. And it's a matter of just, we all have to take responsibility and staying mindful and healthy. All right. Well, thanks, babe. Sure appreciate you being part of this. Yep. We're going to sign off now. All right. All right. So, yeah. <laughs>